All right, so um, hi guys. Uh, my, my name is Kevin, and I'd like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar series episode. Uh, today we are partnering with Virtual Shape Research to demo their unique Rhino plugin VSR Real-Time Renderer 4.0. Uh, this webinar will show you how to set up a model in a realistic environment and assign materials in an easy way using VSR Real-Time Render 4.0. Uh, we'll discuss variants of material assignments, uh, environments, and views will be created in this today's presentation and restored with single mouse clicks. A preview of VSR Shape Modeling 3.0, the beta version, will be also shown and demoed, uh, and we're going to demonstrate how it's possible to model geometry in such an environment in real time. For those of you who don't know who our presenter is, uh, Michael Gunter Geffers, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, he has a degree in mathematics and is a CAD software expert. Uh, with more than 10 years of experience in testing, supporting, and demonstrating CAD software, uh, he, before starting the work for virtual uh, shape research, uh, we'll call it VSR because that's a lot, <laughs> VSR uh, two years ago, he was involved in the development of ICEM SURF and ICEM shape design. CADIA ICEM as well, uh, and also at, at the CADIA workbench. Uh, today's presentation is about 40 minutes long, and afterwards we'll have a brief Q&A uh, where Michael will answer your questions live uh, with um, Ingo Stadel from uh, VSR as well. So uh, feel free to submit your own to us at any time in the chat window below. Uh, but before we get going with today's presentation, here's an overview of what we do at Novench. All right. So the Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich.com. As one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, to check out the rest of our Rhinoceros catalog, including plugins as well, you are welcome to call and speak with our sales specialist, Bob Thayer. You can reach him by his email address, bob at Novich.com. And to learn more about the Rhinoceros plugin, VSR Real-Time Render 4.0, I want to encourage everybody to visit Virtual Shape Research at www.virtualshape.com. Sorry, www.virtualshape.com. Uh, cool. And um, to get a glimpse of who is changing the world of design one step at a time, I want to encourage everybody to also visit Novich's very own blog. Uh, every week, our interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. So for more details, you can visit blog.novich.com, and I'd also like to invite you to visit rhinojungle.com. Uh, it's our Novich's own online community for Rhino users, designers, and professionals. So join us as we discuss the latest Rhino news, catch up on Hyatt Minds, and, and you're more than welcome to subscribe to our weekly newsletter as well. Uh, so for more information, visit rhinojungle.com today. Uh, coming up next week, um, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Uh, so many social networks to keep track of. Uh, to help you figure out which social media platform is the most useful for uh, in your growing your online presence and ultimately your business, we invited three social media stars to join us for this latest installment of How to Succeed in Architecture. Uh, so um, you'll learn how to take advantage of social media marketing from architects and a few do's and don'ts and a whole lot of tips for you to make the best of your time online. Uh, to sign up, head on over to our Novich Google Plus page for more details. Uh, last but not least, today's webinar is being recorded live, so if you want to check it out, rewatch it, uh, you can rewatch episode 92 in its entirety as always. Uh, you can always find it on Novich Webinar Series channel through Vimeo and YouTube. With that said, Michael, are you ready? Oh, Michael, hello? Yes, I am. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> yes? Oh, so sudden. Okay. Uh, I'll make you, I'll turn you into the presenter right about now, and yes, enjoy. <laughs> Take you again. Okay, um, just checking that you guys can see my screen. Can you? Oh, yeah. Kevin? Yes. Very nice car. Okay, because uh, I, don't, I don't have the uh, audience view here at the moment mm -hmm. in my dashboard. Uh, I see your desktop. Okay, and I see okay, no, no, okay, no, I got it. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a model uh, of an uh, older car which has just been remodeled uh, nowadays. And switching to the Rhino rendered view now, which takes a little bit of time. This model is around about uh, 30 megabytes big. So, um, Zooming in, uh, you guys probably uh, can't really uh, tell about the performance. It's a little bit slow. And having a look at the shadows here, you can also see some artifacts. You can increase the shadow quality for um, the Rhino renderer in the tools options. 
but um, you will always have this kind of artifacts. They won't disappear completely. And I'm mentioning this because um, this is one of the major aspects which is uh, different in the VSR real-time renderer. So I'm changing to that uh, view. If you have installed the VSR real-time renderer, you will have um, this uh, creates uh, just another display mode, which is called VSR real-time renderer, which you can activate then as any other yeah, view mode in Rhino. And um, it sets up a default environment and uh, it uses image-based lighting to uh, light the model. And so one difference already you can hopefully see is that the um, shadow cast is much, much smoother by that, so you don't see any artifacts here. So uh, first thing I'm going to change is um, you can see here the default environment is here, which is used to light the model. And this is the first thing I'm going to change is um, the image-based lighting also um, is responsible about uh, yeah, how materials look. So um, I'm going to the VSR renderer toolbar and clicking on the fifth icon from the left on the environment icon. And then you got this window here. And I'm clicking on the um, on the big button here which uh, displays uh, the current environment and this opens the sub window and in this sub window you can see here that the texture is used at the moment an HDR image the default HDR image and I can change that by pressing here on the three dots this opens the file browser and I'm choosing a different HDR um, by the way, this model and also um, with it, uh, this HDR image is available uh, as a tutorial on our web page in the download section. So if you register on our web page, it's for free and log in there. You can download um, this uh, 3DM model and um, the environment you see at the moment. So um, first thing you see is that the environment is pretty dark, so I'm going to change that. And the uh, VSR real-time renderer has got an own section in the tools options panel, so I can access this via pull-down here. But uh, as a shortcut, I can also click just here on the orange icon, third from the right in the VSR real-time renderer toolbar. This will also just open the properties tab for the VSR renderer. So um, here I can change, for example, the gamma correction to make the whole scene brighter or darker. But at the moment, I just think um, the lighting is okay, but the environment is um, just too dark. So I can just increase the display of the environment. This is not causing any change in the illumination of the model. It's just displaying the uh, environment a little bit uh, lighter. Okay, having done that, um, not sure if you can see that. Uh, you, uh, there's a reflection of um, the model on the ground. And this is just by default, uh, the ground is reflecting 10%. But um, as the ground, yeah, it doesn't look like a reflective ground here in the environment, uh, I'm going to change that. And so I'm again opening the environment menu. And I'm pressing, and there's also the little button below the big one here, the white one. And this one controls the ground of the environment. So clicking on that, it opens another uh, menu. And here I also got the uh, possibility to uh, use a texture to use as ground. Uh, so I'm activating that, then clicking on the th three dots here to open the file browser again, choose the ground plane, and then important, I need to activate the display of the ground plane, otherwise it just catches the shadow, but by activating show ground plane, the ground plane is also displayed. And, um, like I said, the reflection is a little bit disturbing. I wouldn't expect such a flow to reflect. So, down here in the menu, I got the reflection. I'm setting that to zero via with the slider. So, you can see now, if I'm rotating here, you can see um, I've got now a ground plane and uh, inside of my environment. And this one is a little bit too big, it, um, it is actually overlapping with uh, some objects near my model here. So I'm changing the size of the ground plane again by clicking on this button and here in the text field I can enter a size which is yeah, around about 
half as big as before. And now my ground plane is no longer interfering with any objects near my model. Okay, having set up this basic stuff, the environment, the ground plane, um, the size of all of it, um, I can now start to assign materials. And of course you can do that in Rhino too, but the, um, we found that the material menu in Rhino is very complex. It's got a lot of options, a lot of things you can do, but this is also somehow difficult to find the stuff you need uh, to get your work done. So uh, we've uh, created a known material menu, which is um, available via the orange board here in the center of the VSR Retail Render tool tab, toolbar. And um, by default, you only got one material um, always uh, when activating the VSR uh, material menu the first time in a model. But you can um, use the free uh, VSR Retail uh, re Render environment library. Uh, this is um, a different, um, a separate installer you can download for free in our download section on our web page. And having that one installed, if you click on the library button in the top right here, it opens the VSR library. It comes with uh, a dozen of environments and uh, over 300 materials. So i uh, got different categories here and I'm just um, importing several ones which I want to use here in my rendering. So I'm just double clicking as a shortcut to import bright layers. Uh, bright layers. I want to have a red glowing material. Um, I will need chrome, just again double clicking on it to import it. And if I want to have several materials um, of one section, I can of course use the control key, hold it down and uh, select several materials I'd like to have and then just click on the import button in the lower right corner here to get them imported and I will also need the rubber material. Uh, once you've imported this material and uh, if you're using them in your session, if, if you save your Rhino file then uh, this material is stored together with the Rhino file so you don't have to re-import them then, they'll just stay in your 3DM. So um, the first and of course easiest way to assign materials is uh, via layer. If your model is structured in a good way, you can select um, the material here in uh, your uh, material menu, then click on assign layer and this opens a uh, sub window where you can select all layers again via control, you can select several ones or via shift select and then you can um, choose here all the layers uh, which you think uh, should have the corresponding material. So doing so you can also see now I got a reflective material. I'm just going on. You can also assign uh, materials via drag and drop. So I'm just left clicking on bright layers now, moving it into the graphics area and dropping it on the front glasses of my car. So this is also a way to easily assign materials. But like I said, assign layer is the easiest way to do so. So doing the same for rubber for my tires and assigning chrome to the chrome part. So like I said, if you put uh, your model structured in a way that different layers, uh, you put a material, um, geometry which has the same material on that layer, it very, it, it's very easy to assign it in a quick manner. So um, here we already get the first impression of the model. And it is very, very responsive. You can, you probably can't see that on your side because um, as I can see uh, the frame rate is pretty low uh, due to the transmission over the internet. But um, this is very fluent. I can, if I um, activate the, uh, in the VSI display settings, the frames per second, you can see it's um, in the down right corner, then in the viewport, it's around 20 frames per second. So very, very fluent.
And one thing I, I want to assign now is um, the glow material. I want to have my backlights here of the car to be in uh, glowing in red. So I go again, assign layer, assign it to the backlights. And you don't see any effects so far, just um, the backlights got red, but they are not are glowing. This is actually because you're in the display settings. The VSR display settings is here, the window on the right. It can be activated by pressing on the orange eye here in the VSR real-time window toolbar. This opens the VSR display settings. And there you need to activate the glow option. And now you should see the glowing effects, which is um, by default a uh, yeah, one, this, which is the maximum, which is far too much. But you can, by um, editing the material here in the material menu, setting the intensity to so something lower, like, yeah, around about maybe 03, then you'll get a sensible way of a glowing material. So, um, once you've set up a scene like this, you've assigned some materials, you've uh, created um, the environment and the ground plane. Uh, you usually um, want to keep it. If you now save the file and open it again, uh, you'll just find it like uh, you've left it. But sometimes you want to have different materials, different environments, and uh, you can easily save and restore them with the VSR Retime Manor. And you can do that by using the Variant Manager, which is the top most right icon here in the VSR Retime Manor toolbar. And clicking on it, it opens a so far empty window. Um, where I can use a plus button in the top left corner to create a variant. And now what's happening? You see a little preview of um, the current state of the model, which, is, uh, which consists of uh, layer visibility, the materials which are assigned, the current view, the currently assigned environment, and if used, a Rhino background picture, which is not the case at the moment. And also now you see in the graphics area here a preview I can, where I can activate all the states. And first thing I'm going to do now is I'm just changing uh, the blue metallic paint material by another one. Um, to do so, I can say, okay, blue metallic paint, I can right click on the material here in the um, VSR material menu and say select all objects which have this material. And then I can just choose another one, for example, white paint, and say assign, and then all materials with blue metallic paint are replaced by the white material. And having done that, so I've changed the display of my model, and I can just create another variant. I can do that by pressing here on the plus button in the VSR Variant Manager window, but also as a shortcut, I can just right-click on the Variant Manager icon in the toolbar, and you see it creates me another um, preview. So if I'm now I'm clicking on the upper preview, you see uh, all material assignment is now set to the first one where now I've captured the state. I'm clicking on the lower one, it sets the different material. And this way you can, different material assignments can be stored and restored in a very easy way. And this is not only true for material assignments, I can also, for example, change the view. And I can also change the environment. And if I now, again, right-click on the Variant Manager icon on the Real-Time Render Toolbar, it crea I'm creating a new variant. And um, let's do this another time so you can see then the different states when we are talking through it. I'm changing to a third environment, changing the view again, and maybe also again changing the material by saying, okay, select all my white paint objects, right-clicking on the material, say select objects, it, creates, it selects all objects with the white paint material, choose the new material, red paint in this case, say assign, and all the materials change the color. And again, right-clicking on the Variant Manager icon to create a new variant. So now I got several variants here, and if I'm clicking on it, every variant is restoring the view, the material assignment, the environment, um, 
but if you want to, you can also, uh, in the variant manager, you can also choose which attributes are set. So you could, for example, also say, okay, now I've got all these different variants, but I just want to change between different materials. So, um, so you can easily and freely choose what kind of uh, attributes of your scene shall be changed by activating these variants. The VSR real-time render also has a, a full screen mode, which is the most left icon here. And this makes it, um, for example, very easy to use it in presentations. So right now, you don't see Rhino at all any longer. You just see the screen. You can rotate. You can zoom. You can activate the variants here on the uh, via clicking on the preview icons. And you can also this um, activation of um, variants can also be set on keyboard modifier. And then you can switch off the uh, little variant icons here in the top right corner and you would see just the screen and you can toggle through different states of your model of material assignments, views. Just by pressing keys on your keyboard you don't see Rhino at all. And this makes it a very fast and, and good presentation mode. Uh, so for example, in front of a customer, uh, you can go through different possible uh, designs you've made. And also one keynote, I mean, this is um, maybe some people say, hey, this is not very exciting. It's not a, a perfect rendering so far and all this kind of stuff. What this makes really valuable is that um, this is in real time and you can edit, you can model actually in this kind of environment. So for example, if I choose um, the whole exterior here, uh, let me just ungroup and explode it. And then I can, uh, for example, use uh, the control point modeling here. I can um, select a surface. And um, now you see the control point of the surface, hopefully. And uh, I can now, um, for example, modify this control point here. And um, the geometry is changing instantly. Again, this is probably not good to see on your side because uh, due to the... Um, control panel. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, so I was just saying, like, you know, um, yeah. okay. the soft, the plugin works fine. So if we minimize the control panel. Visuals are awesome. So, um, so I can now modify the surface here, and uh, all the shadow, the reflection, all this kind of stuff, is um, updating in real time. So this is, gives you a great advantage during, um, uh, yeah, going through your um, through your first designs and already checking out how how does it look in this with this kind of material in this kind of environment. You can actually model in this environment. With uh, Neon or other renderers, you, you've got to wait several seconds until the uh, image updates, and this is not necessary here. And this is one of the great values of the VSR real-time renderer. And um, also one last thing I'd like to show you uh, is in combination with the uh, VSR WebGL. And this uh, comes for the VSR WebGL toolbar comes for free with every installation of a VSR plugin. And this is uh, this toolbar here. And then you can dump your model um, onto an HTML page, a 3D HTML page, which can be seen in any modern browser. So, um, um, yeah, without any plugin. So if you've got a modern browser like a Firefox, Chrome, or the, and the most recent one, you can just see that there. And so I'm choosing here to, uh, you could put in an HTML title, you can put in your name here in the author section. Also. This, uh, the also name can be um, uh, have a link behind it. You can choose the texture size um, and the environment, the quality of your environment actually, and in which kind of style. I'm using full screen style. And if I press now OK, I'm asked to um, to uh, choose the place where I'm creating an HTML page, and I'll just create this on my desktop. And it takes then three to four seconds. Maybe five. Okay. So now I'm minimizing Rhino. And now I got my HTML page here on double clicking on it and um, opening it in uh, Firefox. You can see, so this is in, in just a current browser. And I got my model 
I got my environment in this kind of resolution, and I can put that, for example, on my web page. I can send it to a customer uh, saying uh, he doesn't have to have Rhino or any kind of view installed. He just need a modern web browser and can say, okay, what do you think of um, this kind of material assignment, this kind of model, in that environment? Is that is it that what you want? So it's an easy way to communicate. Uh, like I said, uh, it's very very powerful, very powerful plugin. The VSI WebGL plugin comes for free, and uh, yet of course develops its full power with all the reflection in the environment just together with the VSI Return Renewal plugin. Okay, um, going back to Rhino, um, we still got some time, so i uh, just um, going over to um, show you some of the new features of the upcoming VSR shape modeling 3.0. It's uh, in beta at the moment and uh, we've changed a lot of stuff and one, some changes I'm going to show now is in the central uh, function of our modeling plugin which is the control point modeling. Um, okay, so um, um, what is already known is that you can extrapolate a surface um, by using the extrapolate mode here. It keeps the shape of the surface, it just shrinks or extends the surface, but the shape is totally kept. So this is not new, this has been there before. What is new now that you don't have to take the whole side here and extend it. If you go here to the left side, you can just extend one side. And what is um, also new is uh, that you, um, if you extend one side, you can also choose that um, how the other control points of this side are modified. If I just choose linear, linear in the control point modeling window, this is yeah more or less a straight line. How the uh, changes on the left side are um, yeah transferred to the right side, which is not changed. If I'm choosing strong. Here is a blend law. You can see that you get uh, that the uh, changes on the left side are taken over yeah, more than before. And if I choose weak, then there the change is lesser. Um, this um, kind of law works also for, uh, for example, the blend law. So if I'm modifying now a single control point. And if, if I got the weak option, I'm modifying a single control point and the rest of the control points follow a little bit. If I'm choosing the law to be strong and I'm modifying a single control point, you can see now it's a, the control points follow much more my recent changes of this one single control point. And also a very uh, powerful function which has been added now in the control point modeling but which is also available with more option um, as separate function is the smooth option. Um, when I'm shaping a surface or uh, anything, uh, a model, it, I often end up with a um, somehow strange array, uh, or a little bit messy control points. It can easily happen. Uh, it doesn't have to be as much as I'm doing it right now, but it's just to show you what it can be done now. And um, after all, you say, okay, uh, I got roughly the shape I want, uh, but you to have nice light lines and to have a good surface quality, you need equally distributed control points. So inside the control point modeling function, now you got here the smooth button, and by clicking on it, you can see the control points are rearranged. The um, shape is changed as little as possible. And it is also indicated in the graphics area here how much the shape has changed. So this is an easy way to yeah, clean up your control point distribution. Another powerful change, uh, just need to activate the corresponding layer and move my panel again to the right. So what we've also done is uh, we've um, enhanced the surface matching function. So what you see here right now at the moment is um, the model we've had before and I have a surface which I created somehow floating over this, um, over this uh, body of the car and I want to match this surface here into 
not uh, to to another edge, but into existing surfaces. This can be done now in the BSR surface matching function. I'm selecting the edge which I want to match, and then I'm asked by default by reference edges because this is the most common type. I, I can also click on the reference surface button here. And then I can select surfaces. It can be several ones. They just need to be connected, good enough. And doing so, it uh, then I can choose uh, the connection quality, which is uh, in my case curvature here. I'm pressing apply, and now this surface is matched into the two reference surfaces I've selected. I'm um, just giving some freedom on how the edge here is allowed to move. So. Now I've matched that side, and um, I'm also I'm doing this again for two other sides, so you can maybe see what is maybe good for. This time only selecting one reference surface, pressing apply again, and giving some freedom on the left and right side how the uh, surface is allowed to run into the reference surface, and making it a third time here on the bottom. Selecting the reference surface, hitting apply, giving some freedom in the shape. And so what I've done now, I've created some kind of air, could be an air vent or something similar, just changing to the VSR return display to show you that I've matched three edges into existing surfaces without uh, connecting, going to reference edges. So, um, because we can now match into surfaces, uh, we can, of course, also our um, BSR surface matching analysis can now measure the deviation from an edge into a reference surface, which I'm doing right now. And um, for this edge, I'll just choose position continuity. I'm hiding the handle so you can see just the analysis. And on the other side, I want to just measure how this edge is going into the reference surface about uh, tangent quality, which is actually pretty good. And why am I doing this? Because uh, I now want to see what you've seen before in VSR uh, control point modeling, the smooth function is also available with more option as a separate function, which is called smoothing. It's the second icon from the left here. And here, I can select a surface, and this uh, surface, if I choose the edges, they, if they can be freely um, rearranged, you can see now uh, it's smoothing the shape. But of course, I'm losing the position connection and uh, the tangency connection to my surfaces I had before. And very often, if I want to uh, rearrange my control points to, to clean them up, but I want to keep um, the transition quality I have to nave at edges or into other surfaces. So what I can do for that is I can, for example, keep switch to position here, and it keeps the position of all edges of the surfaces, of the surface here, or I can even choose to keep the tangency, and then it will also keep tangency on all edges here. So this is just a global switch which you have here in the smooth function, but you can also say, okay, maybe I want to have tangency to this the three sides I've just um, I've just matched, but on the left side here I don't have any of these um, constraints and I want to free it. So I can right click on the handle in the graphics area and choose to either have it position continuous during the smoothing or to choose freely so it is free and can be moved in any way during the smoothing process and only the other three edges are kept. So this is a very powerful function to, to uh, rearrange your control points, get a clean control point layout while keeping um, transition qualities to um, yeah, adjacent surfaces. Um, another very nice function we, uh, we've added is um, to to create um, a whole surface cluster from polylines. 
So what you here see here right now is um, is the mesh of a of a tooth, and uh, using some VSR tools, I've created curves on that. I can also show that uh, I will show that in the next step. But you can create curves on this mesh, and uh, let me just switch off the mesh so you can see. So what I I've got here is curve network. A lot of curves connected to each other. And I can create surfaces in this curve network by using the new function surfaces from CurveNet. It um, asks you to select your, an, um, your arbitrary amount of curves which need to be connected. And then if I'm hitting apply, it searches for closed loops and creates surface clusters in there. So what I've created now is a closed surface cluster just from this curve network. So when you've created a curve network over, for example, a mesh, then you can use this function to uh, get your first shot of surfaces uh, with just one shot, your first impression, a closed surface cluster. And talking about, okay, how can I create all these curves to get to this, such a closed um, cluster, I'll just open again modeling and use here. Here you got the mesh of a car. So what you've had in the uh, old version, you could uh, select the mesh of the car here as projection base and then you were able to use the dynamic sketch tool to um, create curves on the mesh and you were already able to snap curve ends to each other so you can create a closed um, curve network and you were able to use oversketch to modify this one. And what is now and will be new in the next version of our um, tool is that you can not only snap to existing endpoints of other curves but you can move this kind of star points. So you can now easily just sketch it. You don't have to worry where the endpoints are. Just sketch it so that they are connected and you can afterwards move the connection points to um, the place where you want them to be. And this is not the only change. Before you could only do that with uh, curves you've created in the curve sketcher at that time. Right now if I'm pressing OK, I've created this curve, I can start the sketcher again. And if I stop sketching by clicking the right mouse button, I've uh, stopped the sketch mode, I can press select curves. I can then select existing curves and these curves are then treated just like I would have created them. So I can create a dozen of curves, I can stop, can do something else and then I can just continue to sketch new curves. So it is very easy to um, finally get a closed curve network on a mesh. It's easily to adjust it, move the star points, use the oversketch option to change the shape of the curves and this way you can get the input for the surface uh, for the function you've just seen surfaces from CurveNet. So um, see we are running out of time slowly. So just uh, to give you a short overview, we have also created um, a first shot of a fillet function. We've also um, enhanced uh, existing functions like the multi blend. You can control better the shape and uh, how the, the control point distribution of surfaces created with the multi blend and a lot of other stuff. Um, yeah, just check it out um, in round about the release will be in round about a month I get, I guess, and then you can um, you probably will get this if you're uh, through our newsletter or through any other channel like for example Knowledge and, and then you can download a test version from VSR Shape Modeling 3.0 and check it out for three weeks. Okay, Kevin. Hey, Michael. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. Uh, so um, I have a number of questions. I think uh, you have the window open as well. Uh, so let's get started with the first one. Uh, Tom wants to know if uh, virtual shape research uh, will be available for VSR will be available for OS X someday. Uh, Ingo answered this, but uh, if you know the answer, I think uh, people will love to hear it live. <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, uh, the first thing, um, Rhino um, McNeil has to come out with a um, 
has to finish the macOS um, uh, development and after this will take place. I'm not sure what they've said lately. I'm not uh, into that into much into that topic, but uh, I think it's are still several months until this one is finished, and then it will be open to uh, the developers of plugins, which is also us. But uh, and yes, then of course we could do that. Yeah. That's cool. This um, kind of big work. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we have another question. Uh, is there any specific extend tool uh, in the VSR plugin where you can extend with negative values? With naked values? Okay, so, so you want to extend, uh, for example, by 10 millimeters or something like that. What is the question? Oh, negative. Extend negative. by negative values? I mean, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, uh, okay, uh, I've also shown in the... Um, I've shown that uh, maybe it was just too fast. So I've got the surface here. I can select the surface. I can use the extrapolate option. I can also shrink the surface, of course. So it's a negative extent of the surface. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, has the fillet tool that uh, uh, has the fillet tool the shorter length option? Um, Let's see. I'm not sure. Uh, I think Ingo also help. answered this. Maybe we could read Ingo's answer as well. Um, let's see. Okay. So uh, Ingo's answer was uh, our new. F so the question was, how the, has the fillet tool, the chortle length option? <laughs> uh, no, so not, um, not at the moment. Uh, this is this is mm -hmm. the first implementation of the fillet surface. Uh, I've just opened the panel, and. It has, uh, you can select several surface sets which don't have to be connected. So you can uh, just uh, two bunch of surface clusters you can select, don't have to be a, a B-Rep, it doesn't have to be joined. Uh, you can just select single surfaces which are connected, to, so two sets of them and you can uh, then fill it them. And the options which are possible is to trim these of course, uh, to enlarge them, to yeah, hit the start and end points of the input surfaces, you can select the radius smoothing to get a good control point distribution and uh, then you get actually um, yeah, the, the usual rolling ball fillet uh, as Bezier or as nerve surfaces and uh, sometimes it is useful not to have this rolling ball but uh, more than a, more a G2 blend. So these are the options um, and so, so these are the options which are available uh, in the first shot of the function and then We'll start to um, we'll start um, just just creating another surface to uh, uh, let's see. Oh, still demonstrating. Yeah, sorry, but uh, you you can go. On. I just want to uh, show you um, here in this simple example. I can select surface set one. I can select uh, surface set two. I'm not sure if he has picked surface set one. Okay, no, it is, and no, maybe radius. No, don't know how big this is. And then I can choose to have a rolling ball, or have a G2 blend between these, and it can be trimmed. Uh, but uh, these are just two single surfaces. But I can also use surface clusters, surface sets, as I've mentioned. Okay. Next question. So I have okay. another question. Uh, is it possible to do a projection-based match align from the current view or X, Y, Z axis? Um, okay. yeah, I apologize. Yeah, I apologize if it's uh, coming out incorrectly because uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very uh, technical. Yes, I don't see, okay, so I don't see uh, the question. Can you just read it again, please? Is it possible to do a projection-based um, align Match uh, match slash align from current from the current view or X Y Z axis. Uh, not so far. Um, I mean, we can uh, we are using the projection method um, in surface matching to to match into surfaces, uh, but this is a normal projection at the moment. But um, will be enhanced earlier or later uh, in a way that um, you can also choose on the kind of projection uh, or the kind of direction in which the control points shall be moved to achieve the wanted uh, matching. It's not that difficult. 
uh, will come earlier or later, uh, but uh, it's not in the current version. In the current version, we only have the normal projecting, normal projection when matching into surfaces or reference ge geometry. Okay. Norbert wants to know: uh, Are there any plans to include the uh, extrapolate function by specific value? Yes, I mean uh, we got the technology, we got it right uh, right now. We uh, just in the uh, control point modeling, but um, there are of course, um, yeah, wishes like I want to extend it by a certain amount of uh, or other special wishes. So this is a known enhancement request, and as we got the technology, I think it will come earlier or later. Yes. Uh, Josh wants to know: um, Can you show a complex uh, fillet operation uh, that you can do with uh, VSR uh, shape modeling that usually fails in Rhino? Uh, I don't. I can't tell if it uh, fails in Rhino. Uh, so if, um, just to show what is possible, so you got you can select single surfaces, a bunch of them, they don't have to be connected to each other. I don't think that this is possible this way in Rhino, if I remember it right. I may be wrong, you can correct me, but uh, so the surfaces I can select, I don't, I don't have to select one by one, I can select several surfaces uh, and the input still doesn't have to be one B rep, one join or something like that and the surfaces don't have to intersect each other I don't think this is possible in Rhino at the moment. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, I have, I'm curious uh, because you just um, demoed uh, the shape modeling 3.0, uh, which is still in beta. Uh, where can uh, people find more information about this uh, this upcoming uh, release, uh, Michael? Uh, well, information. Uh, I think I've, in our forum on our webpage, I've posted. Um, a list of um, upcoming uh, enhancement of this uh, release and um, if people want to participate in the beta test this is possible uh, yeah on a, a decision basis you can just write a mail to support at virtualshape.com uh, if you want to participate at the beta and then uh, we can get into a communication and maybe you can have access to the beta then and just try it on your own. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll switch back to me as the presenter. Uh, that pretty much uh, sums up the Q&A, but if you guys have any questions at all, just feel free to uh, submit them in the chat window and then uh, I'll format and forward it to the VSR team and make sure that they are able to uh, get the answers out to you guys. Okay, so let's see. I'll make myself a presenter. Cool. Let me know if you guys can see my screen, if my audio is coming in okay. Nice. All right, so yeah, um, on behalf of the Novich team and on behalf of VSR, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you for attending. Uh, this has been a jam-packed webinar with a nice sneak peek of uh, what's to come with uh, VSR Shape Modeling uh, 3.0. So um, for more information, um, I do want to let you guys know that uh, uh, the Novich webinar series is brought to you by Novich.com. Uh, we are one of the largest online design software stores. Uh, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. If you want to check out the rest of our Ryan Officers catalog, you are welcome to call and speak with our sales, uh, sales specialist, sorry, uh, Bob Dare. Uh, you can reach him by his email address, bob at novich.com. And if you want to learn more about the Ryan Officers plugin, VSR Real-Time Render 4.0, and also about shape modeling as well, uh, you can visit Virtual Shape Research at www.virtualshape.com. Um, like Michael said, uh, if you guys want to take your uh, virtual shape skills, want to learn more, you have any questions, uh, this is a snapshot of the forum uh, at virtualshape.com slash en slash support. Uh, as you can tell, um, this is a snapshot and Michael was in the forum, so he's running around there uh, a lot. So uh, if you guys want to learn more about this, uh, check it out. To interact with the team, VSR team, head on over to virtualshape.com. Uh, yes, and to get a glimpse at who is changing the world of design one step at a time, please visit Novich's very own blog. Uh, every week, uh, our interview, interviews shine a light on those innovators whose work break out from the norm. Uh, so for more details, please visit us at blog.novich.com. And I'd also like to invite you to visit rhinojournal.com, which is uh, Novich's own online community for Rhino users, designers, and professionals. So join us as we discuss the latest Rhino news and catch up on the latest headlines as well. So check it out. <coughs> Um, coming up next week, we have a, another Google 
Hangout on Air, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn. If you want to learn how to leverage your business, uh, whether it's architecture, whether it's uh, for your own design, small firm, freelancing, whatever, uh, this will be a great way. We have a jam-packed panel, and we're going to discuss uh, the latest do's and the don'ts uh, for social media and how to promote your brand. So check it out. Uh, to sign up, head on over to our Novage Google Plus page for more details. Uh, last but not least, uh, today's webinar presentation has been recorded, is being recorded, and uh, by the end of today, we'll upload it to our channels on vimeo.com slash novedge and also at youtube.com slash novedge. So if you guys want to learn more, like and subscribe. Uh, last but not least, uh, find us on facebook.com slash novedge. Um, you're more than welcome to follow us on Twitter. Uh, we'll make the announcements uh, for when the webinar is up and ready. Uh, you can find the details up there at the latest. Uh, Michael, do you have any last words before we sign up on this presentation today? Oh, just thank you for letting us <laughs> participate. <laughs> and, um, Thanks for the presentation, Kevin. I hope you guys enjoy dinner. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, also thank on you. behalf of the VSR team. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>